radiologists are human working in a pressurized system. With artificial intelligence, you can have an AI system and it can help with improving efficiency, quality of care, and potentially reducing burnout as well. Well, Jamie, it's, it's really great to have you today. Tell us a little bit about your, your background. I was a clinician in the UK Special Health Service for eight years, where I specialize in clinical radiology. I left clinical practice in 2021 and I joined Blackford. Blackford was subsequently acquired by Bayer. You worked eight years in the NHS, obviously one of the biggest healthcare systems in the world. Give us your, your perspective. A lot of healthcare systems across the world are facing a fundamental underlying problem with supply and demand. A lot of them are experiencing burnout because of the increased pressure, the increased workload, and without enough kind of funding and resources to support that. Yeah, and, and really, Jamie, this is true all over the world. And it's not going to get better, is it? Because as the population ages, there's more and more medical need, and, and in many cases, the supply is, is actually going down. Where does Blackford Come in. I think artificial intelligence is potentially a change enabler. Say you have a patient and they present with symptoms suggestive of lung cancer. Normally that patient would then go on to have a CT scan. The radiologist is then responsible for interpreting that CT scan and identifying any abnormalities or lung nodules which could potentially be cancerous. But as you know, radiologists are human, they're working in a pressurized system and they can sometimes miss these findings by mistake. With artificial intelligence, you can have an AI system which is automatically reading these studies, they're interpreting them, and then they can highlight and flag any lung nodules there. And, and as I understand it, you're saying it's not, uh, it's not replacing a radiologist, but it's supplementing them and helping them to do their job better. Exactly. For example, in the US, quite popular use cases are ones that involve triaging of acute cases. So let's say that you have a patient who's suspected of having a stroke, you have to act quickly. AI can inform the relevant clinicians to start acting if there is a positive finding there. In Europe, an interesting one is that there's more and more uh, prospective evidence coming out around the value of AI in mammography. In Europe, you have two humans reading a mammogram, whereas in the US, it's actually one person. And are there study results on things like this? How, how does, uh, let's say, a hu one human plus AI compare to two humans? I think the most interesting one is the Maasai trial. And this is actually looking at AI and mammography. So this is a randomized control trial, which is really the gold standard of evidence that we want to get to. And so far, the results have been promising. Um, so it's suggesting that, yes, this could potentially be a major benefit for efficiency there. I can also imagine some people are like, hey, whoa, not so fast. You know, I, I want a doctor to uh, uh, read my, my CT scan or my X-ray or whatever. I, I'm not sure about this AI. Where are we on this? Yeah, that's a really good point. According to the FDA, there's over 700 AI applications. Over 70% are in radiology. But there are other specialties using AI as well. The early adopters are trying to figure out, okay, how best do I deploy this technology safely within my department? How do I go about monitoring it? And how do we go about regulating it as well? We need to take the patient's uh, thoughts into account in terms of do you want AI involved in your interpretive process? Do you want AI involved in your, in your care? And tell us a little bit about the business model. How, how does this work? So the healthcare provider pays an annual fee and they'll have access to the platform. At Blackford, we have a very large portfolio, so we have a really wide offering of different AI use cases and different AI vendors as well. One analogy we sometimes use is um, similar to a marketplace. So I don't know if you use an iPhone or an Android, but if you go to your phone and you access your app store, you have access to all these applications which you know will work on your mobile device. And that's essentially what we're trying to do in easing that access and uh, integration for all these devices and applications. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it has to be the best for the patient, doesn't it? I think there's a, a high bar uh, for demonstrating that it's superior. But if it's superior, we, we got to go there because I think we all we can all relate to it personally or our friends or family members when they've been affected by some serious disease or accidents. Having that accurate diagnosis is, is job number one. Well, Jamie, it's fascinating work you're doing and thanks for joining us today.